This week's web video fishing forecast from New England. We've got details in the April issue of the Fisherman Magazine, which is due out this week. Trout updates from Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, including details on the early opener in Rhodey, the opening of blackfish season in New England, and much, much more. Check it out. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Hey there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast. Uh, well, before I get into things, I want to let you know that the April monthly -ish, uh, edition of the Fisherman Magazine is due out this week, and it is our annual kayak buyer's guide. Got a copy of it right here. Um, this features more than two dozen awesome fishing kayaks. It's also got the official details of the 2021 Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, as well as the details on the 2021 Coastal Kayak Clash, excuse me, with the brand new sponsorship on the kayak and there being our good buddies over at Hobie. So be sure to check all those details out. Also got the final plug building installment from our buddy Dave Anderson for the year. And we got to look at the spring blackfish season that opens up, which I'm going to get to in just a minute for you, as well as much, much more. Of course, it's always available online at thefisherman.com, at your newsstands, as well as your mailbox this week. So check it out for sure. All right, we're gonna jump into the reports. I'm gonna get on this quick because I got trout feeding behind me. I just got into a couple, breaking away for the video real quick. But in the meantime, gonna start off with trout fishing. Trout stocking continues across the strait, which in Massachusetts, with major expansion of locations in the last week. Mass Wildlife does a plan to stock approximately half a million fish this year, and they've got fish going in from Wellfleet to Lee in the last couple of days. Now they're including brooks, browns, rainbows, and tigers. And as to that final species, the tigers, they haven't stocked any yet, but they got some 2,500 fish, 14 inches or better set to be stocked. I checked the list, they have not put those out yet. Be sure to keep an eye out for those. And if I get word on where those are placed, I'll be sure to pass them all, that information along to you as well. Now, bridging the waters from Massachusetts and Rhode Island, got my buddy TJ Kopecki with a video report this week. He's got info on bass, panfish, trout, uh, striped bass, and tog. Also got word, Excuse me, of a, a new uh, uh, kill switch requirement on uh, for boats smaller than 26 feet. He's got the details for you, so we'll go ahead, go ahead and take it away, TJ. Thanks, Toby. Hey guys, back again. Uh, another week of fishing, uh, some ups and downs, some weather to deal with, a lot of rain. We had some wind. Uh, we got through it. It's uh, overall, it's been so so a good fishing week. The last week that we've had. Uh, fresh water remains good uh, with bass to four pounds reported in the Warren Reservoir and other reports of good bass and some of the other local ponds in and around the East Bay. Uh, I've been fishing in some of my local ponds, also doing well with crappie and occasional, occasional sunfish or two, uh, maybe a couple of slime dots mixed in, uh, nothing to write home about there. Um, I ran into a few anglers over at Milford Pond. Um, I always do my scouting when I'm out there. Uh, just asking people what they're doing, how they're catching, what they're using. Uh, I ran into Jay Lopes and Blake Hammond. Both anglers were fishing in Milford Pond using shiners and night crawlers and they were doing well on both. Uh, it was kind of like an even match between the two. Uh, they were getting good bites. Uh, they found that the bigger fish were biting on the shiners uh, as opposed to the night crawlers that they were using, but uh, which is typical, those crappie uh, have those big bucket mounts that they they just expand out and then they can swallow pretty much anything uh, big enough in the four inch range. And I saw some of the shiners that they were using, uh, a couple of them in the bucket were close to five inches long. So uh, fresh water remains good around here. Salt water, didn't hear too, too much about holdover striped bass. I'm sure that the rain and the cold front that came through probably didn't help anything. Chased the bass down a little bit, just you gave him a little bit of lockjaw. Um, and just looking at the upcoming weather for the next week, um, tog season opens up on the 1st, which is Thursday. You're probably gonna be seeing this report at the same time. Hopefully you guys are out there fishing. And I uh, just wanted to show a couple of you guys uh, some of the beginners, and I know there are some beginners that watch and then there are some people, but uh, hey, a couple of different methods that uh, that I use with tog fishing. 
you know, just a little dropper rig here with a weight and that sinker just hangs a little bit below. Um, I use this pretty, pretty much a lot of the times or you can uh, either use it, you know, with the Joe bags uh, jig on the bottom or we have an asylum jig here. There's just a, a whole bunch of different jigs you can use on the bottom and with the jigs you would just hook the crab through one of the legs and act back out another one of the legs as the same exact thing when you use the hook on this. You just want to put that crab through the leg and secure it on there, drop it down to the bottom, wait for a bite. Um, hopefully, you know, things are going to be good, but you know, some of the weather looks kind of crappy for Thursday again, rain and up to an inch and a half of rain. But uh, hey, hopefully we're going to get out there, we're going to fish and I know that most of the bait shops are uh, well supplied with crabs hooks, sinkers, even the tog jigs that you need to fish with, whatever preference you have. A uh, couple other notes that I need to talk about that I've been, you know, I do a lot of reading and um, for all our anglers that are fishing from boats this year, uh, as of April 1st, see this right here? This is a lanyard. So it's called an engine cutoff device. Uh, for boaters under the new National Defense Authorization Act, uh, it's designed to prevent a, a boat strike injury. Uh, any boat that's less than 26 feet when traveling on plane or above displacement speed, uh, you need to have this around your wrist uh, now. It's just a new law that's a federal law that was put into place. So if you don't have one of these, you should just go out and get one if you're a boater and make sure you are wearing this. Uh, according to some of the reports and stuff that I've been reading. Uh, trolling and docking at low speed is not required. Uh, if it's three horsepower uh, or less motor, which is like 115 pounds of thrust, I believe, uh, you are exempt. Um, first offense is a $100 penalty, uh, but uh, I think it's more gonna be, if you get stopped and don't have it, it's more gonna be educational. Uh, just to let you know that you have to wear it and then they're gonna mock down that they did stop you. Um, and one other note for boaters, uh, if you boat in Cape Cod Bay, uh, April 1st also says that if you have a boat under 65 feet, uh, there is a 10 mile an hour uh, speed inside of Cape Cod Bay. It's just to protect the whales um, in there that come into spawn. So uh, if you, if you're watching a new boat in those areas and you didn't hear about that, you can definitely go and uh, read up on all this stuff. Um, I'm a Boat USA member, so I'm able to read all this stuff on there because they talk about it. But I'm sure you can go to uh, the Division of Marine Fisheries and they have it all there on their website or massgov.com. Uh, you can also get that there. Um, and one other thing, hey, uh, the trout season's going to open up on the 7th this year in Rhode Island. Uh, I'm sure we're all anticipating that also, along with the tog season that starts in the first. So uh, hopefully everybody gets out there and uh, does some fishing, and uh, we hope to see you out there. Tight lines. Thanks a lot, TJ. Now, on that engine cutoff device that he uh, just noticed, of course, we're going to have coverage on it. The weekly uh, uh, issues begin right after this April issue that's due out this week. And one of the April weekly supplements online, we are going to have a full breakdown of what's going on, what it means, what you got to do to stay legal. So stay tuned for that. We'll let you know once that is live. Um, TJ also mentioned trout in Rhode Island. Is there was an official statement or announcement made last week with an early opening of trout season over in the Ocean State. It's set to take place on Wednesday, April 7th. Now, DEM's uh, Division of Fish and Wildlife is stocking over 60,000 trout this spring. That includes uh, rainbows, brookies, golden rainbows, which we don't have in my waters, brown trout. They've got more than 100 waterways across the state set to get stocked. Now, in addition to all those trout, They've also got 4,000 Sabago salmon, uh, which are going to be stocked statewide. Now, again, this year, those hatchery-raised golden rainbow trout are being stocked in anticipation or preparation, excuse me, for opening day. Now, these trout are a color variation of rainbows, which provide a really cool experience for the anglers out there. And if you catch one between April 7th and April 20th, you are eligible for one of those awesome golden trout pins. All you got to do is take a photo of yourself with the fish and email it over to DEM's website or email, excuse me, the email address is dem.fishri at dem 
.ri.gov. Now, if you didn't write that down, we're able to catch it. Complete details on the announcement can be found right now at thefisherman.com. You can click on the link at the upper right-hand corner of the screen. It's got all the details on what they've got stocking, as well as the email address, once again, for you to get in on that really cool golden trout program. Moving on down into Connecticut, where I am right now. Uh, trout stocking continues this week with some really popular locations, including places like the Naugatuck River and Candlewood Lake getting some fish. They also have some trout parks and trout management lakes. That's where I am today. I'm here at Rogers Lake down on Old Line. They stocked it this week. It's a special trout management lake put some bigger fish in these places. I got a couple of really nice brookies before I shot this video. Hopefully get out and get a couple of more here. Um, daily trout stocking updates are posted at the Connecticut Fish and Wildlife Facebook page, and you can also check it out at the inter interactive state trout stocking map for all the details on what is going on, where and those fish have been placed. And then last up for you here this week, blackfish season opens on April 1 in Mass, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. Minimum size in all three states is 16 inches. Now in Connecticut, we got a two fish bag limit. Mass and Rhode Island, it's a three fish bag limit. Keep in mind, if you are fishing in Mass or Rhode Island on a private boat, there is a maximum per vessel uh, 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 bag limit throughout the season of 10 fish, regardless of how many anglers you got on board. Of course, this is just for private anglers. If you're on a four higher, it's, it, it's just the per person limit. But again, private anglers, private boats, 10 fish limit, regardless of the uh, total number of anglers on, on board. Generally, the early fishing is a little slow to get going with the inshore cold waters, but you can uh, uh, give a look to the article that I wrote in the April edition, talking about spring blackfish. I talk about some of the locations and, and conditions you want to look for. Really, it's about finding a little bit warmer water. It can just be a degree or two from the surrounding waters to turn them on. That's all you need. But hey, if you do get out there and get on them, or if you plan to head out and fish this weekend, be sure to start off your trip by visiting thefisherman.com. It's Tigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Tigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Tigercraft.com for a dealer near you.